Stephen Curtis Chapman, it is an honor to be able to talk to you here on Charisma Magazine Online and to be able to talk about some uh, just incredible concert that you just uh, you just did a, really a few days ago from when we were, yeah. when we were recording this. It's going to be airing on TBN on uh, November 24th, but you have had 50 number one <laughs> songs and uh, you got together with this orchestra for these beautiful arrangements of these songs. And you're also celebrating 20 years of show hope. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment, but um, you know, putting a lot into this performance, uh, I'm sure it takes a lot of energy, but what was your biggest takeaway from this, uh, from this amazing concert? Yeah. Well, thanks, John. Good to be with you. Thanks for what you do and just the privilege of getting to share few minutes with you and talk about this uh, celebration. You know, all of these things, I think, um, you know, when we get these opportunities to celebrate something like, you know, 50 songs uh, over the years, making it to the top of the charts. I mean, that's a crazy sort of ridiculous thing that, you know, that that would ever even happen. Um, But I've been around long enough. You stick around long enough, you know, (laughs) really amazing things can happen. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're just, you just keep showing up and that's kind of me, I'm like a, a bad penny. As they say, I just keep showing up. <laughs> uh, I got another song. Wait a minute. I got more. I got something else to, to, to tell you and sing, and sing for you. Um, and, and so, you know, I think moments though, like this, you know, to, to sort of celebrate a, a, a milestone, a mile marker in the journey really are just, one more opportunity mm. to just be humbled, to to be reminded that it's all God, that God is good, that He has been faithful, that I get to sing about what is eternally true, you mm. know, and take a little moment of a little drop in the bucket, you know, fifty number one. Doesn't matter if it was five thousand number one. What is that? You know, it's it's a kind of it's awesome and it's kind of silly and it's kind of you know it's it's music. It's but anything that gives us an opportunity to come together and just remember how good and faithful God is and has been is I'm all in, I'm all for. And, and then to get to do that with, you know, uh, a, a symphony with an orchestra, to me, the, the sound of a symphony is, is the the sound of heaven. Yeah. You know, when I read the Psalms and, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the symbols and the, you know, the, I mean, we don't have the lyre and the, the lute and whatever the instruments are sometimes referenced there uh, in, in Psalms. But I think of just when you ha- hear, you know, strings and violins and violas and cellos and the bass and the low mm-hmm. end and the rattle and the timpani and the brass and you put all that together, uh, there's just nothing else that, that can create that sound. And to me, that is like, that's what heaven is going to sound like. And so I've loved incorporating that into my music over the years. If you know, the great adventure, for example, Mm -hmm. was one of the first times that I said, Hey, I want to open this album with a symphony, uh, arrangement of something that just, it's a movie soundtrack. It's like that epic, you know, it's, we're, we're going on an adventure and I need, I need a soundtrack for that. Um, and so we created the, you know, the prologue for the great adventure, a guy named Jack Redford, uh, orchestra arranged that, composed it. It's beautiful. But how often do I get to perform that mm. with a, with an orchestra? And uh, so when we were thinking about celebrating something like 50 number one songs and 20 years of the work of Show Hope and 35 plus years now of, of you know, me getting to share my music through recordings, yeah. like, w- how would we do that? And I was like, I would love to do it with a symphony. And we also were joined with a choir of eight singers, but they're called the Choir Room, Duan Hill, gifted, um, just kind of choir director and and uh, brought this amazing group of singers. My band was there as part of the whole mix. So we just created an amazing night of music and got to do that in Nashville at the Fisher Center. It's a brand new, beautiful performing mm-hmm. art center, symphony hall. Um, and the cool thing of doing it in Nashville is that many of the musicians playing on stage um, around me in the symphony are musicians that played on the original recordings. I mean, oh, that wow. original, uh, you know, the great adventure uh, prologue. So many of those people that recorded that with me were mm-hmm. the ones that did it in Nashville back when I first recorded it. 
So it was really cool to kind of, it was like a homecoming for some of us musically. Um, so yeah, just an amazing night. And then on top of all of it is, you know, TBN said, well, we're going to capture that and share it with people, you know, that won't get to be in that room that night. So I'm really I'm so honored that they, they did. did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that they've recorded that so that we get to enjoy that. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's going to be on uh, TBN uh, through their app and their the regular broadcast on uh, November 24th. But I'm sure that they're going to look for opportunities to be able to put that out there in other ways as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because this is, um, I mean, Stephen, your your music has. Um, I mean, as soon as I told some people that I was going to be interviewing you, the texts that I got because they're like, "Oh, this song is great. I love this song. It's like this was a soundtrack of my life during this part, you know, during this part of my life." And Man. you know, like your music really resonates with so many listeners over so many seasons of our lives. Um, I know you've gone through a, quite a number of, of seasons that are good as well as some difficult ones as well. Mm. Yeah. You know, I'm sure a lot of these memories of when you were writing, you know, in your notebook, the actual, the, the original song, you know, like that, that memory is probably flooding back to you as you're performing it on stage with this orchestra. Yeah. Um, can you just tell me about God's faithfulness about some of these songs and how God just kind of took you to that, maybe to that place where you were writing that and it was just him and you, and now you're sharing it in front of all these people. Oh yeah. I mean, that, that's the amazing thing about music. Um, you know, I, there's a great old song, a country song years ago. I think it was Trisha Yearwood that sang it called the song remembers when, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's, you know, just talking about how music can transport us back to places and nothing, you know, can do that for me, even at points in my faith journey, like songs, when I sing, I mean, The Great Adventure is a good example, mm -hmm. um, you know, that of, of a gathering I had. This was a time when I had just finished, uh, for the sake of the call, a tour, my first band tour. Really, music, my music was, you know, things were getting busier and, and mm -hmm. more successful, I guess, in a way than, than I even imagined when I started. I didn't know where it was going to go. I had a, you know, pocket full of songs. Uh, you know, that I just thought I would love to share these with people, but I don't know if it's where it's going to go. I don't know if mm -hmm. it's going to, if it's going to work, if people are going to, you know, respond. Um, and I won a Grammy award for the sake of the call, won a gram my first Grammy award. So things were really taken off in a way that I never imagined. My family was growing. Mary Beth was pregnant with our third child. Uh, the, the, the pressure from all of the success was building mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if I was even if I was supposed to even keep doing it, because I saw the toll it was taking on my marriage and my wife and my family. And I wasn't there, you know, for my kids because I'm on the road touring and it's great, but it's hard. And, you know, there's no there's no, you know, you don't go to school and learn. How do you do this? You know, it's like it's you're, you're figuring out that as you go and trying mm -hmm. to be faith, faithful, you know, to to my family and my commitments um, and to the opportunities that were there. And I remember having a meeting with my some pastors uh, and some of my record company people, my manager, just people who, you know, my business, you know, partners, but also people who really cared about my heart and my family and ministry. Mm -hmm. And I remember meeting with them and, and I broke down. I just, I remember weeping and saying, guys, I don't know how to do this. I don't know if I even should be doing this because mm -hmm. of the toll it's taken on my family. I know God's given me these songs and this opportunity, but, but maybe maybe I'm not supposed to keep doing it or how do I do it in a way that doesn't, you know, just, I don't, you know, just lose the things that are most important. And yeah. I really care for my family. And I remember just feeling like in that, I remember using the word, I feel like I'm just, I'm not enough. I just, I don't know if I'm enough to do this. I don't know if I have what it takes. And I feel like I'm a failure. Really. If I'm honest, I feel like I'm failing my family I'm failing this. And that was when one of my really dear friends and pastors, Scotty Smith, who's been a part of my music and ministry over the years for many years, just said to me, you know, Stephen, we're here to help walk through that and help you figure and pray through that, whatever that means. Um, mm -hmm. And if it means you're supposed to stop or slow down or whatever. But most importantly, he said, I want to talk about that word failure and about the words not enough. And he said, because you know this, you write songs about it, but I want to encourage you to remember what the cross 
is what Jesus did at the cross. He took all of our failure, all of our not enoughness on himself. And he said, yeah, you're not enough, but I am. And my grace is enough for you. And so Mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of that. You don't, it's not, you know, it's not your performance. You're not going to, you're not going to make me love you anymore by Mm -hmm. writing one more song, doing one more concert, you know, any of that stuff. It's that's already all done. And it just was the way he encouraged me and reminded me of the gospel that just sent me on this journey. I remember walking out of there. I had these tears of, of heaviness walking in. And on the way out of that meeting, I had tears of surrender and joy and just this relief of, wait a minute, I, it's, not, it's not on me. You know, mm-hmm. It's on Jesus, and he already took care of it at the cross. So I just get to respond to that. And, and, you know, I can't mess this up, you know, was kind of the message It's like, yeah. he's already done the work. And so I was so encouraged and just felt this sense of, man, this is the adventure that mm-hmm. we've been invited into to know Jesus, not God's mad at you. God's got a big, you know, scorecard holding up going, that's about a 7.3, you know, uh, today, but he's like, I'm, I'm looking at you through Jesus and, It's, you know, that's what I see. And it was like, man, that is so freeing. And I got to write a song about that. So I wrote The Great Adventure literally after that meeting, started work writing that song. And, um, you know, all I could come up with is, man, it's like, saddle up your horses. Let's go. It's an adventure. Jesus said, we got to, it's going to get scary. It's going to get crazy, uh, but it's going to be awesome. And and that's what, that's what I'm inviting you into. And uh, I, I don't even necessarily like horses or get along really great with them uh as i was reminded when i shot the video for the great adventure but but i love the idea and the what yeah. that you know feels like like come on let's go and so that was what came out you know mm-hmm. so yeah that's one of many of the stories of where these songs kind of come from in my own personal life and journey and then to get to hear how they encourage others it's like yeah. man that song has been you know our theme song for our family our missions trip our you know, our, our, my junior high, man, I gave my life to, to Jesus, you know, and that song mm-hmm. was a big part of my journey. So I love hearing those stories. Yeah. You know, Stephen, uh, you also celebrated 20 years of this uh, Show Hope organization that you yeah. and your wife uh, started. And I know that adoption is a huge part of your story. And um, I know the, the, the Cinderella song is one that always yeah. that always gets me, um, mm-hmm. even even before everything happened. Um, yes. <clears throat> but tell me about this the show hope and the importance of of this this movement. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, it was uh, for us twenty four years ago when adoption really transformed our family. Uh, we adopted Shohana, uh, and those who you know haven't heard the story. I mean, it, it's amazing. Very complex, long story, but mm-hmm. it started with our daughter, our, our oldest biological daughter, Emily, who went to Haiti on a, a trip uh, with her mom, a missions trip, and spent time with kids that didn't have a family. And her heart was so broken, she came home and said, Mom and Dad, we need to do something about the fact that there are millions of children in the world without a family, mm-hmm. and we, we can we can do that by adopting some of these kids. And, you know, of course, she thought that was a great idea, and we thought, that was not an idea that we were going to do at all because we already had three. And as I shared, we were already overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. uh, in, in our life with all the opportunities and and all the things that were coming our way. But God, uh, would write an amazing story with us as we just began to say, well, may, what if God, is this really something you're inviting us into? Uh, and it would of course lead not only, uh, only to us adopting our three daughters, uh, from China, Shoei and Stevie Joy and Maria, but uh, through our own adoption journey and just having our hearts mm-hmm. opened to and our eyes opened really to uh, the need and and the opportunity uh, as those who read James one twenty seven, where God defines pure religion is caring for orphans and widows in their distress. Mm-hmm. We found out that there are so many families that wanted to adopt but couldn't afford it. Christian families that said, we'd love to take a child into our home and, mm-hmm. and be the family that says you belong, uh, you are loved, and even point them to Jesus uh, and his plan for their life. But we just can't, we, we don't have the finances. And that's really how Show Hope started 20 plus years ago. I mean, we started our journey 
even before the official beginning of Show Hope, just helping right. families ourselves. And then we saw this need growing and this opportunity. So we said, well, what if we tell our story to others through my music and just whatever platform God gives us and, and just tell the church, invite the church, uh, you know, into this miracle of adoption in a way that maybe they haven't thought about before. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, and so we, I started writing the songs and, and, uh, people started writing the checks and we started, uh, you know, build God started building this thing and really growing this tree. We have the, the show hope logo is a tree. In fact, I'm wearing it. I don't know if you can mm-hmm. see it on my shirt now, but I'm wearing one of my show hope shirts mm-hmm. now, uh, celebrating 20 years. Um, but we just began to watch God do an amazing thing in calling uh, his adopted sons and daughters, which is who we are as his yeah. children. You know, our story is just a, an adoption story. God mm-hmm. of the universe paid the price and adoption has a cost. Um, and our adoption cost, you know, the blood of Jesus. I mean, God paid the ultimate price yeah. to make us his children. And so we just felt like, man, this is the gospel. This whole story of show hope is just a picture of, of the gospel that we get to put on display for the world. Some who know the story mm-hmm. of the gospel and some who don't are still going to get, you know, a chance to see it in, in a yeah. tangible way through the work of show hope. So 20 years now, uh, we've been able to help, um, over 8,600 families bring children, wow. uh, from 63 countries all over the world. Uh, the, the, the work of show hope has grown, uh, to continue to help mm-hmm. families, um, because the need is as good as, as, as great as it's ever been, as big as it's ever been, um, with families and, and children that want to come together, uh, yeah. to help that happen. Um, but we've also grown to help families with the medical needs of children that are adopted. Uh, and there are many of those, as you mm-hmm. might imagine, children, in many yeah. cases have great medical needs, uh, that they come home with that are ongoing, that are outside of what families can afford to care for. We want to help provide that. And we also help families with the emotional needs because so Mm -hmm. many of these kiddos and children will come home with, uh, you know, broken parts of their story because of being institutionalized, traumatized from abandonment, adoption, you know, being in foster care to foster home, you know, all the things that come with that. How do we love these children really the best how do we equip families? How do we even train therapists and church workers and caregivers to know how uniquely mm-hmm. can we really care for these children? God has a plan. Uh, we just got to get on board with what it is. And it's through us learning and educating and loving God with our heart and soul and our mind. So how do we train families and parents and caregivers to really love these children in a unique, special way? Uh, so anyway, it's been an amazing journey for us. And um, we're so thankful we got to celebrate it as part of this concert, celebrate 20 years of the work of show hope. It's been, it's been an amazing thing. That's amazing. 8,600 families have been changed and mm-hmm. countless more lives have been changed because of what you've done. Um, and what, what you and your wife have done with, with show hope and your music. And, um, just, I know, I know that, uh, sink or swim, you're diving in and, uh, yeah. you're going deep and <laughs> I, I had to quote, I had to quote one of your songs there. But, I love it. Way to go. Yeah. That was good, John. That was good. You good. <laughs> <He's> good. <laughs> <laughs> but I just thank you so much for taking this time to talk about this incredible concert that, that can be watched on TBN at, uh, on the 24th of November and on the app as well. And I want to encourage people to go check that out. You will be blessed by the music. You'll be blessed by the message and you'll be blessed by the Holy spirit for sure. Mm -hmm. Steven, do you have anything else that you want to say as we wrap up here? No, just thank you. Thanks for what you do. Thanks for, uh, you know, we work together. This is, uh, you know, all of us working together as the body of Christ, you know, the, the, I'm the, was my pastor says that the hangnail on the pinky finger, you know, it's like, but all of these parts of us working together, you know, is no rock stars. No, uh, I mean, Jesus is the star of this show for sure. Amen. But uh, we all get to work together to uh, make much of him. And I love that we get to do that. I'm grateful that we had a chance to do that together today. So bless Absolutely. you. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. God bless you. All right. See you, bro.